Hey everyone. Now for something very, very serious. <laughs> how, how do you act? Uh, with memes. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, okay. So, um, let me tell you a bit about myself. Uh, my name is Mindy, and uh, for my undergrad degree, I majored in communications uh, with a minor in psychology. And uh, after a short stint in media publishing, I went on to do a postgraduate in industrial design. Uh, somewhere in Europe, I uh, worked at a Japanese design studio for a bit, uh, came home to Singapore and found myself uh, somehow working in a startup. And, uh, uh, and then I continued on to work for several other startups and then you know the rest as they say is history. Uh, and then, but that still doesn't really answer one question, right, that's probably in everyone's minds is what exactly do I do? <laughs> what do I really do? <laughs> okay, so to explain what I do and being a UX designer, I found this really effective UX tool that I will share with you right now. It's uh, the what do I really do meme. <laughs> so the, here's what my friends think I do, uh, because I freelance for a little bit. Uh, so everyone has this idea of, you know, uh, designers, they all work flexible hours and they can work from home, from their bed, in their pajamas, which is kind of true sometimes. <laughs> um, my mom doesn't really <laughs> completely understand what I do. <laughs> my colleagues, some of them are here today, but <laughs> I won't name names. Uh, so uh, we use a lot of post-its, right, in um, uh, trying to sort out our insights and stuff. So this is probably their picture of what I do at work. <laughs> And then if you Google for things about design, uh, since there's so many branches and forms of design, uh, and also many, many competing and conflicting um, ideas of what UX really is. Uh, yeah, that's one of the ideas. Uh, for myself, the best uh, part that I enjoy the most about uh, what I do is the part where I get to sketch ideas out um, and refine uh, wireframes and the flow of um, apps and uh, digital products. So this is the part I like the best. But yeah, that still doesn't answer the question, what do I really do? <laughs> Probably something like this. This is the actual. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. So, congratulations. We've just created a meme about what I really do and possibly also contributed to my uh, quarter slash midlife crisis. But uh, what we've also done is we've also put together representations of mental models. Uh, yeah of my job and uh, according they're according to different people's ideas of what they think my job is and um, surprise or no surprise they are all quite different so some of you might be wondering if you haven't heard of this term before uh, what is a mental model uh, this term is also kind of somewhat new to me it's a relatively new term coined in the 1940s uh, it first appeared in a book called the nature of explanation by a scottish philosopher and psychologist called kenneth craig so in the book, he proposed the idea that uh, the mind forms um, their own models of reality. And then it, it, your mind uses this model to predict uh, future events. So uh, what this means in terms <coughs> of uh, software or digital products or any kind of product really, uh, is that your user's mental model is the way that they per perceive the world around them. And this model isn't based on facts. It's based on their beliefs. That's based on their own experience. So uh, whatever they think about any given system or, their, uh, or interaction with your existing system, product or solution, um, it will be based on what they uh, feel or what they perceive. And it's not really based on what your actual product is or what it's supposed to be. So in most cases, um, their idea of it or their interaction of it will lead to a, um, a kind of experience that closely resembles what uh, the product really is, but not 100% accurate most of the time. Uh, so why is this important? So going back to our earlier meme, here we can see that uh, each user has their own mental model. Like in this case, my mom has her own idea of uh, what I do. And she uses it to construct her idea of the same actual system of, of my job. Uh, so. She thinks that you know what I do is pretty simple and that I can do it in five minutes, for example. So each, every other user will have their own idea about how it's supposed to work, uh, and that will impact 
uh, their own planning of how they use your product system or solution and how they predict your system will respond to them. It's all based on your mental models. Interestingly also, within the same user group, they will have different uh, ideas of it. So in this case, each person uh, has their own mental model of what I do and informs what they think my job is, uh, what they decide to do about it, and what they expect from me in response. So yeah, but enough about talking about me. Uh, we can look at some other examples. Here's a, a good example of, uh, I would say, if I'm in room 105, if I come from a cultural background where I read uh, horizontally, uh, left to right, uh, then I would probably think that room 105 is to my right. But if I come from a cultural background where I read vertically, uh, I would probably think that room 105 is to my left. Uh, so this is an example of how like uh, culture informs your mental model. Ex another example of mental models at a cultural level, uh, which I won't be showing you, but you can look it up on YouTube later, is uh, an old classic called The Italian Man Who Went to Malta. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it kind of went viral before means were thing. Okay, so here's another example of uh, in urban planning, there's a term called desire paths, and that's what happens uh, when paths are formed that weren't designed by the urban planner, but it's what happens when people or animals, uh, they choose not to use the path that the urban planner has paid for them, so this is what happens. Uh, so, yeah, back to this. So where does UX come in and how does it help? So when we interact constantly with all kinds of uh, digital and physical products, we are actually attempting to accomplish certain goals with them. In the process, uh, we have what we call a user experience. So because we all construct our own uh, small-scale model of reality uh, in order to anticipate and explain events while using these systems and products, uh, when what we uh, anticipate to happen does not happen, then the experience does not meet, or even might in some cases contradict our uh, model of reality, then it causes a feeling of psychological inconsistency that we would commonly describe as having a bad user experience. So why is this important again? So when we design and develop product, if we can understand what's going on in the user's minds and what their mental model is like, then we can kind of simulate uh, what that model is within our design so that it will meet their idea of reality, it will meet their expectations, and therefore you will be creating a product that's more usable and intuitive. So let me tell you a little bit more about uh, UX and design thinking. So this is um, uh, a quote by Donald Norman who practically invented what you, the, the whole like UX thing. Uh, so he says that user experience encompasses all aspects of uh, an end user's interaction with the company, its services, and its products. So um, there are three parts that make up uh, an experience. The technology behind it, the business uh, goals of creating the product, and then the people who use it, the people who create it. So kind of science kind of helps to design and build the way it works. That would be technology. Um, business, things like art, uh, marketing, sales, uh, design. It will help decide like how much people should pay and how you could convince them to. And then the people part, psychology or cognitive science will kind of help us to understand the way that it makes people feel. So the people part uh, is where design thinking comes in. The design thinking framework helps designers, developers, or everyone uh, working on a product uh, to gather data evidence. Uh, this will reduce the risk of making decisions that will potentially result in a negative impact on people. Okay, so design thinking is a, an iterative process uh, made out of three main stages. The first stage, uh, we try to understand uh, who we're building the product for. Then we'll kind of refine our ideas and then validate um, those things and it kind of goes in a loop like that. So user research comes in the understanding part. Mostly the bulk of user research comes in the understanding part. And it helps us to understand uh, the user's mental models uh, and after which we can kind of make decisions about what to do next to improve the user's experience with the product that we're building. Okay, so on to understanding users. Uh, this is kind of um, a good list of um, all the kinds of user research methods that exist out there. There are many, many ways uh, to conduct user research to understand user behavior, attitudes, motivations, uh, perceptions. And there's also that really fun way of measuring a user's brain for response to stimuli 
But these are some of the more widely practiced uh, methods of collecting user research data. Uh, user interviews and observations can help to uncover motivations and goals, uh, perceptions or emotions that are informing a user's mental model and help us to understand people and their needs. So this is uh, talking more about qualitative research and then after you kind of have that, then when you test your system, you're kind of gathering more on the quantitative um, user research. Um, yeah, and then when you have the insight from that, then you will, have, you will form an idea of um, what your goals, perceptions, and emotions are, and then you can um, design the, you can use it to improve, improve the user's experience. Uh, when we are conducting user research, we like to use this tool called Empathy Mapping. Uh, it's a really helpful tool that will help you to kind of um, put yourselves in another person's shoes and connect with how they might be feeling about um, the product. Uh, the problem, circumstance, or situation for which your product is trying to solve, and understanding users, their problems, and the context around their situations are all uh, important in order to design and develop the most uh, optimal solution. And that's the end of my talk. So, in conclusion, <laughs> how do you UX with me? Right. So, we piece together user goals perceptions and emotions to create a usable and intuitive uh, solution. Um, you kind of force yourself to um, think about each person uh, as a user. Uh, they, are, they have individual goals, needs, uh, emotions and perceptions. And you can go from this to this. <laughs> yeah.